right here we've got the the bush lock. We got the cuts in the receiver that are at one angle. The cuts in the bolt are at another angle. And when you fire, that bolt or that lock has to be lifted up in the bolt and at an angle in the receiver. And the two different metals make that slow down just a little bit. There you go. That's the up in the blish system. Hit right, right there. So the operating rod is actually moving the entire blish lock system forward. So what we have is we're looking at the bottom of the receiver so it lifts up and then back. Down in like that. So here's the bolt. Alright, this is how it mates. So when firing, it would sit in right on top, forward and then back, so just like so. Just like that. With the blish fitting in right here in this channel. Yep, and then locking into the receiver there. And that blish lock has to be lifted all the way out of the way before any of this can move back. And because of the, the brass sticking against the steel, because of the, right the dissimilar metals, it delays the opening of the bolt a little bit and reduces the rate. Okay, to start off, this is the top of the gun at this side, bottom of the gun down here. This is the charging handle. You can see how it's cut to attach to the blush lock wedge. It goes together like that. And then the bolt has its cut to the wedge, just like that. And then the charging handle fits inside there. And once they're put together, they fit like that. And complete all the way forward, it locks like that. And when you fire, that wedge has to be lifted up before the whole assembly can come back. And then the coefficient of friction between the brass and the steel in the receiver is what delays that blush lock. Right in here, you can see the oiler pad for this side. There's the same one on the other side. There's a little bit, there's a loop of spring steel that has those little felt pads to oil the sides of the bolt as it's reciprocating to reduce the wear in there.